for those who cross the Wananui Akua, my Hawaii Bu Hawaii Ro Hawaii Pa Ma Mao, Kitene Utatata Fenua Aotearoa. And we all check with that journal. That's how come we're here, here today. Um, and so we should never, ever, ever, ever lose those. Those histories, those ambitions, and those aspirations for a better life, because that's exactly what we came here. We came here for a better life from where we came to here today. And that's what's so inspiring about this image of the Wahahoga. So, um, a little over 18 months ago, um, an RFP came out from uh, the Ministry of Health. And we have to acknowledge uh, Dame Tariana Tudia for that, because she said she looked at what was happening to Te Aumani, and particularly across Whānau, and particularly across our Rangatahi, and said this can't go on in terms of loss of potential. And uh, we, put in a, we put in a joint book, uh, Te Rei Mazatini, Māori Health Workforce, and Te Rei Mazatini, and we were successful. So we journeyed again to produce, to develop the Wahahaura Māori and Pacifica Suicide Prevention and Workforce Program. And we've been absolutely privileged to uh, work alongside many, 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 many of you who are here today and uh, many of our whānau hapu iwi and communities. So um, Mason actually put this together and uh, because he's the advisor uh, to Tsuru Mazatini and also chair of the leadership group that um, Gerhard's going to talk a wee bit about. So it's about our solutions, what makes us unique, what's, what makes us indigenous and the Wakahodu represents whānau and community, uh, so whānau, hapu, iwi and community. And there were actions by those same groups that came from within. So they said, actually, um, you have the solutions. You have an idea of what will make it better for yourselves. And, um, and they came as the acknowledgement of that knowledge uh, to be ambitious, to want something different to what the generation before, the current generation, and the generation to come and the alliance that, uh, between the partnership between um, Māori and Pacifica. And they will be funding that will go directly to communities, whether it be by uh, via the current community initiatives or through research, which uh, why you're here today. And outcome focused, um, so uh, there's this, this say that we have to um, when we receive funding from the Ministry of Health and it goes, how well did you do? How much did you do? And is anyone better off? So have found strengths and solutions within themselves. The big district health boards, uh, we, we yet to uh, have a, um, a positive relationship in which it's shared, uh, but are working on it and certainly through the Ministry of Health who have uh, given off the their funding to us. Um, resilient youth, resilient youth um, are our cultural identity uh, and there is a section that we're going to be talking about and underpinned of course by our Māori Pacifica aspirations, um, I like to call them ambitions myself, um, and a, a model of practice that we all uh, agree upon, um, not necessarily the same way of doing things but certainly agreed on a, um, a model of practice. So this is it uh, across um, our leadership group. All connected but not necessarily, um, uh, all connected and influ influencing but not particularly one, one lead. Um, so the, the leadership, as I said, the leadership group uh, is led or chaired by, co-chaired I think, uh, by Sir Mason, uh, Sir Professor Mason Jury and um, and there are a few others from the ministry in there as well, as well as our Poa Rangi, which is the CEO. So um, they uh, they work together, and um, Navar certainly have representation on there. Uh, Monique, 
is our CEO and uh, yeah, that's his name here, psychiatrist. Uh, and uh, they, they talk about um, over a broad, broad approach to it. There are specific ones. Um, so the Māori, the Māori program goes called Oko Kuko Tata, which means uh, we all have a we all have a place in here. And whatever goes on, it's everyone's business. It's my business, it's your business, and it's everyone's business. And we need to work together to make sure whatever we do, um, you know, whatever we do, we work in a way that will benefit our, um, but I hope, in the communities. And uh, the research. So, in terms of the aspirations and ambitions for research, is, uh, it leads the way in terms of the evidence that we that we uh, believe is important, that we believe has impact, and uh, when we allocated uh, the funding, we certainly looked at both community and iwi uh, approaches, which is what we've got, and uh, what where that might be, as well as bringing in this. So we were always going to meet, but today was about bringing all of you together who contribute to this co-papa on a on not necessarily as I've heard you say not necessarily just on suicide prevention, but on a well-being uh, scale. So uh, to us, um, there is a certainly a risk. A risk end, but there's also an order of well being, and both are important, uh, which is why we have the range today of presenters because both are very important. Um, do you want to talk about flowing at all? Um, Gerhard? No? Uh, so, um, yeah, so flow is the Pacific one, they, they two are. Uh, so, we have the joint. The joint one with uh, the research, and they funded that. Um, the Māori is a community one, and we have 47 in that area. And then we also have Pacifica, who've got 17. So there are currently, and, and uh, Vicky, um, yeah, Vicky monitors the 47. We have nearly half completed, and Rachel leads the evaluation of those. And we look at, as I said, from how well did you do? How much did you do? How well did you do? And is anyone better off? Uh, so that's undertaken at the moment. And really, this is the outcomes of measurement. So um, whatever we do, we should all be contributing to um, reducing Māori and Pacifica suicide. So do we, will we see that? Will we see that coming through um, Stats New Zealand? Or will we see it coming through the suicide mortality data that's currently being put together? We have to see it somewhere. We have to, in our hearts and in our minds or souls, know that that's what we're contributing to. We also have to, uh, in our hearts and minds, contribute to, to uh, reducing suicide attempts. And ease the impact, which means um, we work with recovery with the families or with the um, with the rangatahi. So those are the three, and people might say, oh, well, when are you going to know that? Mm. Well, well, we've got to keep knowing that. We've got to put up some, some measures that can, uh, that can indicate that to ourselves. Um, and it might be through, uh, it might be through national uh, stats taking, it might be, might be just through community states taking that, or, or assistance with DHBs, or assistance with uh, the police or the coroner. So we've got to work out a way um, to make sure that our data is collected so we can say what well, the whole contributed to this, and we can say that by saying because the states are down, or they're reduced. Um, the three goals, uh, so we have a um, Informed, cohesive, and resilient communities. We've heard about that to, uh, over the last day or so. Strong, secure, and nurturing whānau. Um, not so much, I don't think. And um, the outcome goal uh, three around Rangatahi. 
Why, why have Rangatahi been um, in uh, certainly getting uh, in her uh, uh, um, presentation talking about Rangatahi? Why are, are they so important? Besides the fact that they are, you know, they are Narangatira uh, Moa Popo, our future. Um, they are also the growing uh, in terms of, of our population. Set, New Zealand can probably tell us more, and they are also um, where our population bases, well, Māori definitely, that we are a young population. Well, our, our stats prove that we're, we're uh, our base is actually Rangatahi youth and uh, looking quite young, and and um, which is the opposite to non Māori. So we should be concerned because they are going to be. Uh, they're going to be instrumental in, how, in terms of um, Māori as a population. I think you can also uh, say where they sit in terms of a population. So we, we kind of funded on that, and um, I think it's the, the areas are um, actually Bay Pliti here in um, Waikato and uh, South Auckland. But it is changing, and actually South Auckland um, not as fast growing, you wouldn't think that, but it's, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, since, since that's New Zealand, but um, in actual fact, the growth area is not going to be in South Auckland, it's going to come down this way. So whatever measures we put in, have to address where the population is. Sorry Wellington, sorry South of Taupo, <laughs> uh, you've done, you kind of don't put it on their radar. Uh, maybe you can find a way, maybe the, the forum here can find a way to, to say, is that, is that actually a fact, an actual fact around the population? But, so we would think uh, if we're allocating funding, it'd be going to those areas, because that's where the growth is for Martin. Um, I'm just going to go into the outcomes indicators, because I heard, a, I heard something going over there. So we have we have been working on it, or Rachel has been working on it, and um, to give some detail. And I'm just going to go over it in terms of what I've heard over the last couple of days uh, and goals one, two, and three, because we actually have some research that can sit in those goals. Um, so we have goal one: formed cohesive, resilient communities and I'm going to go to, so we put them into primary, primary prevention which is whole of population activities and a secondary prevention which is about targeting at-risk individuals under goal one. And a pathway I heard from um, is to strengthen community resources including uh, economic and educational resources. Now to me that sounds like, um, and the indicator of that is communities have established innovative learning pathways. Now that to me sounds like the entrepreneurship. So that one would sit for under a outcomes framework and goal one, secondary prevention, uh, pathway um, strengthening economic and indicator we have a community going on an innovative learning learning um, pathway. And that same uh, secondary prevention, targeting at-risk indiv uh, individuals, initiate actions that meet the needs of Tangatapu. And I would say probably Elizabeth is looking at a goal one, secondary prevention, pathway, in initiate actions, and the indicator would be communities have access to cultural, of, cultural education and suicide prevention uh, resources. So we'll hear that, some of that today, or over the last couple of days. Um, in that same, um, so in that same goal, goal about informed cohesive and resilient communities, we would have in the tertiary prevention, which is about minimising adverse impacts arising uh, from suicide and the pathway or action would be to initiate actions that will reduce community risk. And the indicator is 
communities have established a safe forum for, discuss for discussing suicide prevention and resourcing. And that to me sounds a bit like Nada Pitutam Um And then in the same tertiary prevention, uh, minimising adverse impacts arising from suicide under goal one would be pathways or actions and initiate actions through meeting cultural needs that will reduce community risks and the indicator is communities have established cultural practices that lead to redu reducing the levels of risk and that kind of sounded like um, yours Denise and yours Jebra in terms of uh, reducing, using cultural practices and reducing levels of risk. So if that was for goal one um, I, I, uh, I, in terms of, as I said, I, did, uh, I was listening and I was thinking strong, secure and nurturing whānau. Um, I, I couldn't hear anyone, although um, I think most of the, the following, the reset and really goal three about safe, confident and uh, engaged data. So the outcome, um, so the second would be in secondary prevention, targeting at-risk individuals again, and the pathway would be support positive initiatives for rangatahi in terms of cultural and sport and learning. And so the indicator would be communities and health services enter into a partnership to foster positive engagement for rangatahi uh, with learning and sport. So that kind of links to what uh, Rachel said in terms of kiri kiri roa and communities that they work with that they would do something around that area. And um, for hope, um, in terms of kiris, it would definitely be under rangatahi and uh, I've um, put that under a action for to foster foster uh, peer support and communications at a uh, local, regional and national level rangatahi leadership networks established to support peers <coughs> who are isolated or distressed. And rangatahi may well establish e-help um, leadership. So that might fit there in terms of where, um, where that project was. So it's an alignment on it's an alignment of projects or research projects. So I've only done, I've only listened to the, to the Māori ones and see um, what might be the outcome and what my, how that would fit into the, the outcome framework uh, that was put together on behalf of Waka Hauru. And um, because at the end of the day, it also has to go past those in the ministry who want to see, um, well, how did you work that out? How did you work that? How did you come to the conclusion that this was an outcome or that wasn't an outcome or uh, where does it sit in, the, in the, the scheme of things in terms of goal one, goal two, goal three and pathways and actions. So we have to be able to do that with, we have to be able to do that with everything that we're funded and as I said we're well on the way with the community evaluations and they have been lined up. Uh, they are, uh, the ministry, um, Oh yeah, they like infographics, they really like those, someone said that today, um, because it does a snapshot of what, what each uh, initiative has done. So we write a, a full report of what's gone on, and, and all, our, all our funded uh, projects, research project, projects, uh, are, um, report to us and give us uh, their milestones and what they're doing. We're really happy with what we see. And then um, we're going to collate them so it's very clear. Um, one for the ministry where the where they're funding it is gone, but more importantly I think for us um, who work with our um, who work with our whanau hapu iwi and our communities in Pacifica that we in our own hearts and minds know that we are um, contributing to the very best for our, um, for our people. And then we will have a, we also have a written document around that. Uh, 
for the families themselves. And those that we've sent out, uh, I think we've sent out about 10, and those we've sent to have, um, have thanked, thanked uh, us for providing their corridor in a way that they, they can um, keep for themselves. Um, so we're very, very blessed to have been part of that for, um, for them. So I, I do um, take this opportunity, <coughs> and I know Kia Hope's going um, this evening, and to thank you. To thank you all for, uh, first of all, um, for working tirelessly in this kind of um, and for your dedication and your commitment uh, to making it better for our people and the people we serve. Um, and when we, uh, when we, the assessment team that are here, so Tiwara, myself, Gerhard, um, Linda, and um, Alex, um, we'd want, we did want to provide you with a forum too that we could all get together and all those who have worked <coughs> tirelessly for decades, you heard decades, uh, in this co but that we would share that. Uh, we've had a hui whanau um, at the beginning of, uh, oh, last year, but but last year, we were shared with everyone, um, and we'll have, a, we'll have a time again we can, we can share uh, with everyone again. And but I, um, I do acknowledge uh, everyone that's come and that will contribute to uh, uh, the future initiatives that the Waka um team will have, and um, the evidence and all the information that will be relevant to our people. So, uh, and I'm gonna pull on my